so real quick i want to talk about vacuum leaks while we're here and we've done the mr fusion build we've smoke tested everything uh what you guys didn't see is i went back to verify that the uh, egr was leaking and it is it's leaking out right around the back corner here so that needs a block off no big deal this leads me to something that i've been wanting to talk about for a while so everyone knows fox bodies you know have issues you know with like shuttering and bucking and stuff like that especially if you put a cam in these cars but a lot of that actually comes down to either not having the proper base idle reset done on the car the timing being too high the tps out of adjustment that sort of thing but also a huge issue with these cars is vacuum leaks There are diagrams on the internet that you can look at to find the proper vacuum routing. You don't have to be an expert to know this. If you hook the wrong vacuum line up somewhere, your car can run like shit. It will buck, it will snatch, it will cause all types of issues. Um, so for a while my car, like at cruising speed at 40 mile an hour or so, you know, you're in like third or fourth gear, that surge almost. And you can just almost feel it in the in the gas pedal come to find out it was a vacuum leak fix the vacuum leak car ran great i could not believe it car ran great didn't do any of the booking and snatching and all that stuff anymore well it started doing it again i couldn't find a vacuum leak so obviously the smoke tester showed me my leak well i had three leaks on the car i had a leak down here i have a small leak in the egr and then i had a leak under the plenum so i plugged the leak under the plenum and i rerouted the vacuum hose that was hooked up wrong to this and got rid of two of the three leaks now the car drives and rides so much better it's crazy and now we can cruise low speeds fourth or fifth gear the car runs so much better now before like i said it would just buck and snatch rpms just jump up and down and that was all due to a vacuum leak guys You know it's not perfect yet because i still have a little vacuum leak over here at the egr so that needs to be blocked off but i was surprised so once again the car runs so much better just by fixing vacuum leaks but it's not just about having a vacuum leak it's about having vacuum hooked up in the wrong spot because that is a big issue also with these cars you can't just assume you know where vacuum lines go and just start you know plugging stuff up it doesn't work that way these cars do not operate like that regardless once you do away with your egr you really need to know how to route your vacuum lines because that's going to be the difference in a car running good and a car that bucks and snatches and makes you just want to kill yourself so please by all means just look up online there are vacuum diagrams out there to show you where all this stuff goes and when you don't have an egr it'll still show you the proper vacuum routing so that's something that i've been wanting to touch on for a long time because these cars can just they'll drive you crazy you know my dad's car i worked on it really hard got it running really good and all of a sudden you know he calls me one day and he's like the car is not running very good it's bucking it's snatching it's just crazy he can't even drive it so i'm assuming that we have another vacuum leak somewhere that's popped up so at some point i'm going to get that car either back over here or i'm going to go to his house and we're going to try to figure out what it is that's wrong with that car but more than likely it's going to be a vacuum issue you know throughout all these years of dealing with these fox bodies people were so quick to say the it was a computer issue if your car skipped and didn't run right and you changed the wires you changed the plugs maybe you even went in and changed the injectors and the mass air meter and a couple other sensors and your car still had like a buck to it man it was the computer that's just what it was the computer was bad swap it out go to a cobra computer go to an automatic computer i mean there was just all this stuff going on back in the day i remember all that now after years of messing with these cars i have come to find out most of these sensors are still good these cars are still great cars but what's happened over the years is these vacuum lines become very brittle and they break and i'll tell you all it takes is one vacuum line that size right there to break and your car runs like crap now more than likely your car will run great under full power probably still have plenty of power but uh at idle or you know at like when you're trying to just lug the car around ease around it's going to want to buck and snatch 
more than likely it's going to be a vacuum leak i know that may sound crazy to some of you but some of you also know that what i'm saying is the truth and make you want to give up on one of these cars i'm telling you, you will chase and chase these problems down you need to learn your car like i always say get out here do your research look around dig around try some different things if you're ever out here messing with your car and you start to taking things off and moving things around like vacuum lines and stuff always take a picture before you start that way if something were to happen you can always come back and put everything back like it was at least improper vacuum routing is a major major issue with these cars also one other thing that i wanted to kind of cover with these cars i know i've had a lot of people message me lately saying that their car runs really bad whenever it's cold okay guys there's two sensors that usually are the problem here that's the act and i think that's the ect those two sensors are usually a problem if your car has an issue with a cold start in other words you start your car up it runs really bad uh, a lot of times they won't even stay running on their own and uh, until they warm up sometimes it's a minute to two or three minutes it depends on how cold it is outside once this car starts to heat up a little bit then the car will run a little better and they'll run fine until they get cold again and you try to start it up and then you'll have issues once again there's only really a handful of things on these cars that cause these things to be such a pain in the ass mass air meter is a common problem act ect sensors uh map sensor back here map or bap sensor whichever vacuum leaks obviously that's a huge problem tps and timing those are really the major issues with these cars and once you get that stuff figured out these are really good cars so definitely get out here and go over your car with a fine tooth comb because i'm telling you it'll surprise you it blew my mind and i've been dealing with these cars pretty much my whole life and i was so surprised to find out that something so simple one little vacuum leak can cause these cars to run like crap now a lot of times if you don't have a cam in your car you don't notice it as bad everyone knows that guy that supposedly has a cam in his car but he knows and you know there's no cam in the car but it sounds like it does more than likely that's because of a vacuum leak we had a uh, one of my buddies come over with his car um, seth's dad jimmy come over with his 90 model mustang and uh, this car sounded like it had a cam in it the car has no cam in it but a vacuum leak will cause that always go back and check all of your plugs on your injectors because they are bad about coming out and i'll be honest with you guys that number eight plug back here that number eight injector is bad about coming off so always you know look back through here see if you can make sure they're all plugged in like they're supposed to be more than likely that can save you a lot of heartache we need to do a revised base idle reset i've done like two videos covering that already but we've grown a lot since then and i want to do another in-depth base idle reset video and basically go through the tune-up procedure with these cars uh, look through all the sensors make sure everything's good show you guys how to test them at some point we will get around to that i know a lot of people ask how to test these sensors i'm not a big tester per se uh, my buddy ray with the white uh, fox body now he likes to test everything i for one don't really do a lot of that but i will research it and i will look it up so that i know how to test these sensors for you guys so that we can basically work our way through a car that's not running properly and hopefully as long as there's no internal damage get it to running a hundred percent and i'd love to be able to share that with you guys so that's something i've got to research myself if you guys have any problems with your car not running right i would always start with the base idle reset on it it's free doesn't cost anything to do i'll put a link right here to the video so go check that out and also check for vacuum leaks hey look you don't have to build this mr fusion thing this smoke tester detector thing that i built you don't have to do that honestly i just built that because it's fun and i like to build things like Scotty Kilmer said, you can literally take a cigar and blow smoke into this tube over here going into the back of the intake and you can tell if your car has a leak. You don't have to spend all that money. You don't have to spend all that time. There's quick and easy ways to do it. One other quick thing, we kind of touched on it a second ago, but I want to reiterate, a lot of these sensors get a bad rap. Guys, if I would have known what I know now, 20 years ago when we were working on these cars, I probably could have saved so many other Fox bodies along the way. You know, back in the day, uh, if your car didn't run right one of the first things you did was you replaced the mass airflow sensor you know you replaced the tps it was always the tps it was always the mass airflow sensor or either it was the computer there's so much information out here nowadays so if you're coming up and you're new to the fox bodies just be thankful the information is out there i know it's hard sometimes to pick and choose what's right you know what's good information and what's bad information but there's so much information out here now for these cars to help you with them 
please take advantage of that and get out here and work on these cars. A lot of times it's not a major issue. It's just usually something really small. A lot of times somebody has messed with the throttle position sensor on it, or either somebody's you know, come in because the car is not running right and they, they adjust the idle. When you adjust the idle, you adjust the TPS. It changes, everything changes together. Or they've uh, bumped the timing up too high on the car. These cars don't like a lot of timing. You get up 14 and above degrees on timing and they don't like that. Sorry, I didn't want to really get off on a whole nother tangent, but I, it's just, it was bothering me. I'd already, I'd already cut the camera off and I got to thinking, man, you know, I really want to stress that, that it's not always these sensors. It's just not. I mean, sensors cost money. Base idle resets and looking for vacuum leaks cost nothing. All right, guys, I'm going to cut this short. As always, thanks for watching.